So I'm just waiting for the water to retreat. The trick is, don't get your hands on Hey, my name's Tim Shields. I'm a landscape photographer and I'm standing on a beautiful beach in Maui and wow, is it ever gorgeous. So I wanna take advantage of these black lava rocks that are behind me to get kind of a cool seascape shot with half ocean and half black lava rocks. I want to smooth out the water for this particular shot. I don't want the rough textured look of water. I want it to be completely smooth and flat, which gives the image kind of a fine art type of feel. So it's the middle of the day, and with my camera on its own, the camera is not capable of having a shutter speed that's long enough to smooth out the water. You need a good 30 seconds of shutter speed in order to be able to pull this off. And the camera on its own could maybe do a quarter second of long exposure in the middle of the day. So what I've done, I have put two neutral density filters over top of my camera lens. One is a 10 stop and one is a 6 stop. These happen to be Lee filters and there are any number of brands that will do the job just as well. So I'm going to put the 10 stop filter over the lens which on its own would give about a 30 second exposure and then I'm going to put the 6 stop on top of that that should take me up to at least a minute maybe even longer. And then it's going to smooth that water out so that it'll just have that silky fine art type of look to the shot. It just started to drizzle just a little bit uh, as I was getting set up here. So fortunately, I brought along my lens cleaning cloth, which you should always have in your pocket for this type of a shoot, because invariably there's always water that somehow seems to get onto your lens. This is no exception because even though that the sky is basically blue above me, this little rain drizzle is just coming in and uh, putting water drops on the on the neutral density filters. So now they're nice and clean, I'm gonna put them back on. Step number one is to level the tripod head, which I just did. So now it's time to set up the, the composition. I'm going into live view, and when I'm in live view, what I find is that no matter what setting I have for the camera, when I have two filters on like this, I just can't see through the live view. So I'm going to take the, the filters off just to get the composition that I want, which will be there, and then lock down the tripod head so that I don't move it at all. Then find my focus point, and I'm going to focus about one third into the scene, which is the typical rule of thumb that isn't always right, but hey, it, it works nine times out of 10. Then I'm clicking autofocus off, so now it's in manual focus. And let's slide on the 10 stop. And once again, make sure that this tripod head is really locked down so that I don't move it. There's the 10 stop. So let's review the camera settings in order to take this type of a photo. So this is a Nikon D850, or as my friends in the UK and Australia would say, it is a Nikon. And I love that word. Uh, the longest shutter speed that I can have without going into bulb mode is 30 seconds and that's not going to be long enough. So I have the camera in full manual mode and the shutter speed is set to bulb so that I can use the wired remote trigger for any length of time that I want. For aperture, I've got it at f16. I don't really like using an aperture f-stop number that's higher than that because of the diffraction that occurs in the image. And ISO is at the lowest setting, which is ISO 64. I'm using the live view at the back. And for the first shot, I'm just going to put on the one 10 stop filter. And I'm guessing that 30 seconds is going to do it. So I've already set my focus point for being about one third of the way through the entire image. Now I'm taking a picture and I'm just going to look at the timer on the LCD display and shut it off when it hits 30 seconds. 30 seconds is over, it looks nice in the viewfinder. Now check the histogram. The histogram is pretty perfect. Maybe I could do a 25 seconds, but it's looking great. So now I will try a second one with the stacked filters. So this one, I'm just going to 
completely guess that the shutter speed on this one is really going to be in the neighborhood of three minutes, I'm going to think. Okay, and coming up on three minutes and let it go. Review. I can see it's super, super dark. So this probably needs five minutes of exposure time. I would also need to open up the aperture a little bit more and maybe even bump up the ISO. And for demonstration purposes, I'm not really wanting to spend five minutes in between shots to show you how to do this. So I will just remove the six stop, keep the 10 stop on, and that gives me the 30 second shutter speed, which is enough to smooth out the water. Although when it's out to one minute or more, it does tend to look a little bit smoother, but 30 seconds is certainly enough. And if I take a look at the one that was 30 seconds, look at the histogram. Histogram looks good, photo looks good. And that's with the 10 stop at 30 seconds. And here's the one with both filters, it's just pitch black. It needs five minutes. Since I had the neutral density filter on the lens, I wanted to get another shot that gives the effect of movement. And in order to do this, you want to have a shutter speed of about half a second, maybe even shorter. I lowered the tripod leg so that the camera would be nice and low down to the sand so that the wide angle lens would just give that real effect of movement. And with the half second shutter speed, it worked out really well for this shot where you get that blurred type of effect, but you don't want your shutter speed to be too long. Otherwise, you don't get the texture in the water, which ruins the effect of movement. So I'm just waiting for the water to retreat and hopefully getting that sort of the look of a, a river. The trick is, don't get your camera work. So that is how to do it. It actually is pretty easy, but you do generally need the neutral density filters in order to pull this off. And if you want to see how easy you can process your photos, take a look at my presets collection. I have a landscape presets collection that has over 200 presets. They are divided up into 15 different sets or categories. So for example, if you have a sunset image, you just open up the sunset category or set and there are something like 19 different presets within there to choose from. And I divided it up into these 15 sets based on the most common type of landscape photos that you will take. So it's super easy to find the correct preset for the photo that you're working on. So check them out, there's a link down below. I will see you in the next video.